Football Australia has copped a huge backlash following the Matildas' disastrous Olympics campaign. Australia's women's soccer team has suffered its worst Olympic result in over two decades. Uh, decimated by Germany, uh, that strange game against Zambia and finally against the United States. The Stringer defeats really... Tri well, they beat Zambia, but the other two games were a disaster. The coach is now gone, gone Tony Gustafson. It's prompted some very widespread criticism. Now, I've got a lot of regard for former Socceroos uh, great Robbie Slater. He was in the News Limited uh, tabloids today, Daily Telegraph, Herald Sun, uh, and he wrote that Football Australia has only their, themselves to blame, saying this, the way the squad was pampered was embarrassing and probably part of the reason they performed so badly. The millions of dollars spent will also impact on the ability to help coaches prepare players to the level needed. Even the players themselves have hit out at FA's uh, coach, Gustafson, calling his reign a, quote, disorganised chaos and four years of hell. Let's bring in Sky News correspondent Matt Cunningham, who's been doing a fabulous job in Paris for Sky. Matt, there's been concern about the Matildas. Uh, you know, they've had a lot of support locally during the World Cup. What happened in, in France was uh, a mitigated, unmitigated disaster. You're surprised how quickly the coach has been let go and how uh, brutal some of the criticism's been against him? Well, not really, given the performance that we saw uh, here in Paris over the past uh, week, Steve. It has been an unmitigated disaster, as you say, from the Matildas. I mean, the loss to Germany was bad enough. I actually think the game against Zambia that they won... Uh, was probably the worst performance of all. For 60 minutes, they were completely outplayed by a, a nation ranked well below us. Zambia led 5-2, uh, and the Matildas were lucky to get over the line. They won that game 6-5, and there was an own goal conceded by uh, Zambia. That left Australia in the position where they needed to beat the United States in their last game to get through, uh, and they couldn't. Um, you know, Robbie Slater has not missed... Uh, with this column that's in the News Corp papers today. He is a man who does not mince his words. And I think he said what a lot of people are saying, um, Steve. The, 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 the Matildas, um, I, I think there is a view that they sort of let all of the fame and all of the publicity go to their heads uh, at some level. Um, you know, there were reports uh, coming out uh, weeks before uh, the Olympics that, you know, they were... Um, really being pampered, that they had, you know, people who were folding up their clothes for them. Um, Robbie Slater reports today that Football Australia flew 20 staff over here, business class, uh, for this Olympic event. I know the Matildas has been a cash cow for Football Australia. They've certainly been milking it for all it's worth. But uh, I think what this last week has shown is that, you know, there's no replacement for hard work. And a lot of questions being asked now about whether the coach was the right man for the job because the Matildas look really disorganised uh, through all three of those games, particularly in defence, and also about whether the Matildas wanted this enough, whether they worked hard enough, or whether their minds might have been on other things. Matt, uh, let's turn our attention to boxing. The IOC under tremendous pressure here. You've got the Italian boxer, uh, Angela Carini, uh, left in tears. She had her nose splattered all over her face fighting against this Algerian Imane Kelif. Now, this is all comes down to gender identification. Her passport says she's a female, uh, but the genetic test shows she's genetically male. This is huge news right around the world. How much news is it making there in Paris? Oh, I think there's no doubt this has become the biggest story of the Olympic Games, Steve. This is a massive controversy that is taking place. It was already bubbling along uh, before the events of yesterday, but it went to a whole new level after the Italian champion, Angela Carini, uh, withdrew from that bout. 46 seconds was all she lasted. She copped uh, a blow to the face. She thinks she suffered uh, a broken nose. And then she said that... Really, it was the hardest she's, she's ever been hit. She thought she might die. I was out there at the boxing yesterday. We saw Angela Carini. She walked out of the, the arena. I saw her yesterday afternoon walking around outside of that venue, and she looked absolutely distraught, Steve. Uh, and now all hell has broken loose. We've seen everyone from J.K. Rowling to Martina Navratilova weigh in on this issue. Navratilova has called the actions of the International Olympic Committee deplorable. We're actually about to hear from the IOC. They're holding a news conference in about 10 minutes' time. It's going to be on for young and old at that event, I think it's fair to say, because a lot of questions are being asked about why this boxer and another 
uh, from Taiwan who also failed a similar test at the World Championships last year where they were found to have had elevated levels of testosterone. Why they've been allowed to compete at these Olympics, uh, especially given there are a lot of concerns raised by female boxers ahead of this event. Uh, those concerns uh, have really uh, crescendoed now. There is a roar of disapproval for the IOC's decision and I think we're going to hear a lot more about this story, uh, Steve, in the next 24 hours. The other big story, of course, is uh, this doubt around the Chinese swimmer Pan, uh, freestyle world record. Uh, an Australian uh, swimming coach uh, has really called into question how this is possible. Have a listen here. And the thing with the 100 freestyle is there's a cost and effect of what you do in that race. If you go out fast, it's going to cost you at the end of the race. If you go out slow, you might have something to bring it back. And Pan Zhenli from China was pulling away from these two guys. He was actually gaining distance on them in the second 50 after going out faster than any human in history. It just it makes no sense to be able to go out that fast and come home and pull away from two of the greatest swimmers in history. Matt, that was Brett Hawke. He made it very clear that there is a shadow over this victory by Pan. Uh, what's the Australian swimming team saying about this, if anything? Well, they're not saying anything officially. I think Kyle Chalmers has been pretty graceful over the past 24 hours, especially considering uh, the reported comments that Pan made uh, to Chinese TV, basically having a go at Chalmers and saying uh, that he'd basically been... Uh, you know, uh, really ignoring him uh, ahead of this competition. I mean, I think it was a great swim from Chalmers. I think that's what uh, we need to consider here. Uh, he was coming eighth at the turn. He turned, he, he finished second. But uh, as for Pan, well, it's either the greatest uh, performance in uh, Olympic swimming history or it's a performance that's raising some questions. And I think there's plenty of the latter going on uh, at the moment. Someone actually likened it to Usain Bolt, you know, running 100 metres in eight seconds. So, you know, I think we're going to hear more about this one as well. It's been interesting the Americans have really been leading the charge on this one rather than the Australians when it comes to questioning uh, the performance of the Chinese swimmers and uh, also questioning the performance of WADA and whether they have been uh, adequately uh, doing the testing that's required. I was at a news conference with Katie Ledecky, the uh, American champion, uh, just a few days ago, and she was saying, well, are they being tested out of competition? We know that they're tested here in competition. She's saying, is the thorough rig rigorous testing that American swimmers are subjected to, that Australian swimmers are subjected to, out of competition? Is that being done with the Chinese as well? So, uh, I mean, before the boxing came along, it was probably the biggest story, the biggest controversy of these games, but I think it's probably been superseded now, uh, Steve, but uh, it's still a, a massive issue and, and a source of great tension as well between the IOC and particularly the United States. Yeah, I reckon Kyle might end up with a retrospective gold medal. Matt, you're doing a fabulous job there in Paris. Thanks for joining us. Have a, a good weekend in the Olympic Games. You're doing a great job.